Hello everyone, and welcome to another Jurassic Park video by Jeremy James Project. Jurassic Park is without a doubt a science fiction classic, a gripping story of what happens when you combine science with nature. For lack of a better phrase, it's a smart movie. One of the things that made Jurassic Park a smart movie was its scientific commentary, and one of the ways this commentary is explained is through Ian Malcolm's Chaos Theory, the theory that would ultimately foreshadow the downfall of Jurassic Park. But what exactly is Chaos Theory? It's talked about a little bit in the movie, but it's kind of overshadowed by Malcolm's attempts to flirt with Ellie Sattler. The information is there, but I feel as though it's kind of glossed over, much different than how it was explained in the novel. So today, I'm going to talk more about Chaos Theory, what it is, how it works, and where it can be seen. Now I'm certainly not a mathematician, or rather, a chaotician, but I'll do my best. While I will reference the Jurassic Park novel here and there, I'm going to primarily focus on chaos theory as it relates to the Jurassic Park movie, so just keep that in mind. Here we go. In the Jurassic Park movie, Malcolm explains that chaos theory deals with unpredictability in a complex system. What does he mean by a complex system, you may ask? Well, a complex system is essentially a system that's composed of many components that may interact with each other. Some examples include ecosystems or infrastructure. Malcolm also mentions the butterfly effect. What's the butterfly effect? Well, the butterfly effect as it relates to chaos theory is the phenomenon whereby a minute localized change in a complex system can have large effects elsewhere. Basically, it's when small changes occur in one place leading to bigger changes somewhere else. To get a better understanding of the butterfly effect, let's take a look at an example that was shown in the Jurassic Park movie. On the tour, Malcolm conducted an experiment in which he would place a drop of water onto Ellie's hand and have her predict which way the water would travel. On the first attempt, the water went down one side of Ellie's hand. When Malcolm offered to repeat the experiment, he asked Ellie again where the water drop would travel. Ellie thought the water would travel the same way as before. Malcolm repeated the experiment under the same conditions, using the same water, dropping it in the same place on Ellie's hand as before. However, the water changed direction. This is because of many tiny variations that influence the outcome of the experiment. In this case, the variations were things such as the orientation of the hairs on Ellie's hands, the amount of blood distending her vessels, and even things as small as imperfections in her skin. Microscopic, of course. All of those variations played a part in influencing the direction in which the water traveled. They created new conditions, which ultimately created a new and therefore unpredictable result. And believe it or not, Jurassic Park isn't the only story about dinosaurs that contains a butterfly effect. In fact, another example of the butterfly effect can be traced back to 1952 in the short story A Sound of Thunder by Ray Bradbury. In this story, the characters travel back in time to hunt a T-Rex, but are strictly told to stay on a preset path because if they don't, they might change the future. During the hunt, a character named Eccles gets scared and briefly steps off the path. At the end of the story, the characters return to the present day but they find it much different than how it was when they left it. The politician who originally lost the election at the beginning of the story has now won the election, the written English language appears to be spelled wrong, and there are strange gases in the air. How did this all happen? Well, it turns out that Eccles killed a butterfly when he stepped off the path. The death of this one butterfly set in motion a series of changes that, over time, vastly affected the present day to which the characters returned to. Now granted, this is a rather extreme example, but it does relate back to what Malcolm said about tiny variations vastly affecting the overall outcome. And what does that lead to? Unpredictability, the product of chaos theory in action. Now to get a better understanding as to how unpredictability relates to chaos theory, I'm going to read an excerpt from the Jurassic Park novel, in which Malcolm explains chaos theory. Some of it's very similar to what he says to Ellie in the movie, but with a little bit more detail. Quote, Chaos theory says two things. First, that complex systems like weather have an underlying order. Second, the reverse of that, that simple systems can produce complex behavior. For example, pool balls. You hit a pool ball and it starts to carry them off the sides of the table. In theory, that's a fairly simple system, almost a Newtonian system. Since you can know the force imparted to the ball and the mass of the ball, and you can calculate the angles at which it will strike the walls, you can predict the future behavior of the ball. In theory, you can predict the behavior of the ball far into the future, as it keeps bouncing from side to side. You could predict where it will end up three hours from now, in theory. But in fact, it turns out you can't predict more than a few seconds into the future, because almost immediately very small effects, 
imperfections in the surface of the ball, tiny indentations in the wood of the table start to make a difference, and it doesn't take long before they overpower your careful calculations. So it turns out that this simple system of a pool ball on a table has unpredictable behavior. And Hammond's project is another apparently simple system, animals within a zoo environment, that will eventually show unpredictable behavior. End quote. So again, despite having previous knowledge of a system and careful calculations, many small variations will ultimately create changes that will in turn create unpredictable results. So I've talked about water drops on hands and pool balls, but how does chaos theory relate to a complex system such as Jurassic Park itself? To find the answer, I'm going to look at two particular examples of things that happened in Jurassic Park that are a result of chaos theory in action. Example number one is when the T-Rex wouldn't come out during the initial tour. Essentially, the T-Rex, like all the dinosaurs in the movie, is unpredictable, being a prehistoric creature and all. One does not simply know everything about the behavior of extinct animals, and as we saw in the movie, the T-Rex didn't show up on the tour. Why was that? While there's no specific answer, there are many variations to consider. The T-Rex's mood, appetite, stress levels, fatigue, and so on. And all those variations can be affected by additional complex systems, such as climate. Speaking of which, if we take a quick look back at the Jurassic Park novel, you may remember that the Stegosaurus was sick because it wasn't adapted to the modern day climate. The oxygen levels in the atmosphere were much lower than those during the Jurassic period, and as a result, it had trouble breathing. But Hammond and his scientists didn't consider that. They just assumed that because they created the dinosaur and placed it in a zoo environment, it would behave as such. How wrong they were. It's the same idea with the T-Rex in the movie. The main point I'm trying to make is that the T-Rex is in a whole new environment, so there's no way its behavior can be accurately predicted, especially since it's an extinct animal. For those reasons, the T-Rex is not going to obey things like set patterns or park schedules or behave the way that Hammond expects it to. It's just like what Malcolm said, the essence of chaos. Finally, we come to example number two, which is probably the most notable example of chaos theory in action, the fact that the dinosaurs were breeding. Dr. Wu stated that the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park could not breed because they were all female. This was because Dr. Wu controlled their chromosomes. Because of his careful calculations, he more or less predicted that the dinosaurs could not breed. However, what Dr. Wu did not take into consideration was the fact that certain frogs can change their sex in a single-sex environment, as Alan Grant points out in the movie. And if you remember, the scientists used frog DNA to fill in the gene sequence gaps. The dinosaurs in Jurassic Park ended up exhibiting those same traits as the aforementioned frogs. The dinosaurs were able to change their gender. They began to breed. Breeding leads to more babies. More babies leads to an increased population, which is exactly what Dr. Wu was trying to prevent in the first place. So despite what Dr. Wu thought he could control, his actions essentially led to the unpredictable result of life breaking free, all because of the supposedly minor detail of adding frog DNA to the gene sequence gaps. Life found the way. These examples I mentioned have a lot in common with each other. Both of them involved prior planning, research, calculations, etc. And despite all that, both situations yielded completely unexpected results. And these results were essentially influenced by things that humans have absolutely no control over. I'll say it one more time. It doesn't matter how much prior planning and calculating occurs, because small variations will create changes that will lead to unpredictable results. So hopefully now you can see how Chaos Theory and Jurassic Park tie in with each other. The complex system of Jurassic Park is an endless assortment of unpredictable possibilities, especially when it comes to extinct animals. How can we possibly have the slightest idea what to expect? If there's one thing the Jurassic Park movie has taught us, it's that nature is unpredictable, and chaos theory essentially gives us that warning. A warning that there are some things that humans were never meant to tamper with. And with that said, this concludes another video by Jeremy James Prechick. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and even learned something from it too. If you liked this video and want to see more, click the subscribe button. There's lots more where this came from. Don't forget to click the bell. Thanks again and I'll see you next video.